The story I will present to you today is by far the worst mountaineering disaster in Japanese history, and may as well be the worst mountaineering disaster in modern world history, in which 210 soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army embarked on what was supposed to be a simple two day march through the snow. But ultimately, it would end up being an 11 day long struggle to survive, with only 11 of the 210 soldiers making it back alive, a fatality rate of over 95%. Of the 11 who managed to survive, 8 would be severely frostbitten, requiring them to amputate entire limbs. This incident has since been the subject of novels, documentaries, and even a full-length movie. This is the story of the Hakkoda Mountain Disaster. In the early years of the 20th century, the Empire of Japan was aiming to expand its influence across East Asia making conflict with the other regional power, Russia, a high possibility. Therefore, the Imperial Japanese Army would conduct training exercises to prepare its soldiers for operations in harsh winter conditions, anticipating that war with Russia will be fought in a cold climate. One of these training exercises was to be conducted by the 5th Infantry Battalion, based out of Aomori, a northern prefecture of Japan. The objective of this exercise was to assess how effectively supplies could be carried through snowy terrain, using sleds pulled by soldiers. 210 soldiers would participate in this training exercise, which was planned to last two days. On the first day they would depart from the town of Aomori, march 20 kilometers to a hot springs located within the Hakoda mountain range, and then come back via the same route the second day. They would carry 1200 kilograms of gear and supplies with them, divided between 14 sleds. Each sled would weigh 85 kilograms of supplies and the weight of the sled itself. Each sled was to be pulled by at least four soldiers. Now, trekking 20 kilometers through snow in a single day was quite a challenging plan, especially considering they would be weighed down by 1200 kilograms of gear and supplies. But the battalion had previously conducted a similar exercise on a smaller scale, in which 140 soldiers pulled a single sled a total of 18 kilometers in a single day. Although it should be noted that this prior training exercise had been blessed with good weather conditions, this gave the battalion a certain degree of confidence. The Hakoda mountain range, with the tallest of its peaks being only 1600 meters, may not seem to be too challenging on paper. But this area of Japan has some of the heaviest snowfall on the planet, and one should be wary of the weather when venturing into this mountain during winter. On January 23, 1902, the 210 soldiers departed from their outpost in Aomori at 7 a.m. and head towards Hokkoda Mountain. On the way there, a local hunter warns them that a storm is coming, and that they should call off their operation. If they are to proceed, they should at least hire a local to guide them. The commander scoffs at his proposal, essentially telling him that the Imperial Army does not need help from a peasant. They make decent progress throughout the morning, but the sleds gradually begin to lag behind. As they wait for the sleds to catch up, the snow increasingly grows stronger, reaching almost blizzard-like conditions within the span of less than an hour. The officers gather and discuss how to proceed, some of them voicing opinions to turn back. They only had supplies for a two-day trip, and were not properly equipped if they were snowed in and had to make camp in the open, also known as bivouacking. But others would claim winters in Russia would be even harsher. How are they going to fight a war in Russian winter if they were going to give up at the first sign of snowfall? There was also the fact that they had brushed off the advice of the local hunter they ran into earlier. If they were to turn back, it would mean admitting that the peasant was right, a shameful display the Imperial Army could not tolerate. They decide to proceed as planned, and push deeper into the mountain range. The blizzard continues to rage, and the snow becomes deeper by the minute. The battalion as a whole, and especially the sleds begin to slow down, eventually lagging hours behind schedule. By early afternoon the order is given out to abandon the sleds, and carry the supplies by hand. This would result in some soldiers being burdened with over 20 kilograms, and some equipment would be left with the sleds as it was just too much to carry. By 5.30pm the sun was going down, 
so they decide to make camp in the open, a scenario the officers had feared earlier. Ironically, the spot they made camp was just 1.5 kilometers, or roughly a mile from their destination point. If they had moved just a little bit faster, they would have made it to shelter. Orders are given out to dig trenches to protect them from the wind, but this would prove to be difficult as they only had a dozen or so shovels between the 200 plus men. It is unknown if they simply didn't bring many because they didn't expect to use them, or if they had been abandoned alongside the sleds. In any case, soldiers would have to make do with what they had, and dug five trenches, each of them 2 meters in width, 5 meters in length, and 2.5 meters in depth. Imagine having to do that with just a few shovels per trench. 40 men would be shoved into each of these trenches, with not enough room for them to sit, let alone lay down. Attempts would be made to light fires for warmth and to cook food, but they would run into some issues. First of all, the wood was moist from the snow, making it difficult to light them on fire. Even if they did manage to ignite the wood, because the bottom of the trenches was snow, the fire would melt the snow, extinguishing the flame they had spent so much effort to start. They also did not have anything to cover the top of the trenches, nor the walls and floor. So the soldiers were still somewhat exposed to the wind and cold. There was not enough space to lie down, so they could only get brief moments of sleep standing up, maybe half an hour total throughout the night. Sometime around midnight, they finally managed to get some rice cooked, and small portions of lukewarm rice were passed around, but it was nowhere near enough for the couple hundred men. The original plan was to resume the march at dawn, but because many of the soldiers were shivering and displaying signs of fatigue, the officers gave out orders to leave the trenches and head back to Aomori at around 3 a.m., deciding to risk walking through the darkness. However, the lack of visibility and the fact that the snowfall from the blizzard had erased their footprints made it difficult to go back the way they had come, and by the time they realized it, they had wandered into a ravine. The officers were about to turn back to where they had made camp, but one of the soldiers claimed he was confident he knew the way back to Aomori, so they decided to have him lead the way. Unfortunately, this soldier was mistaken, and resulted in them going deeper into the ravine. It was around this time the first casualties would occur. Several soldiers, including one officer, collapsed and went cold, demoralizing the battalion. The blizzard had snowed in the path they came from, so it was impossible to turn back. Therefore, their best option was to somehow climb the walls of the ravine to get back on course. Most of them managed to scale the cliff, but the soldiers in worse condition, either from fatigue or frostbite, would not make it out of the ravine and were left behind. By the time they climbed out of the ravine, the battalion had lost a quarter of its men. They had spent over 14 hours this day trying to make it back to Aomori, but because they had more or less gone in a circle, they had only made 700 meters, or about half a mile of actual progress. The sun was setting, and they were forced to spend another night out in the open. Pretty much everyone had ditched their equipment, so they couldn't dig trenches like the previous night. The men huddled together to make a circle, with the badly frostbitten soldiers in the middle. Whatever fruit they had left was frozen solid, rendering it inedible. They would try to keep warm by marching in place and singing songs throughout the night, but in the middle of a raging blizzard, with nothing to shield them from the elements, it was inevitable that not everyone would make it to dawn. The soldiers on the outside of the circle would collapse one by one. Most of them never woke up. As the sun rose on the third day, only 70 or so of the original 210 were still breathing. The blizzard showed no signs of calming down, and even their compasses had frozen. With no visibility due to heavy snowfall, they could not tell where they were, or which direction they were facing. This is where the commanding officer would give out the order, We are disbanding the battalion. From here on every man should use his own judgement to make it back to Aomori. As well as uttering the now famous phrase, The gods have forsaken us. This would cause some of his men, who were clinging on to the last bit of hope, to break. Some would dive into the river, 
saying they would swim back to Aomori. Others would begin chopping at trees with their bayonets, claiming they are going to make a raft. The battalion would break into a few groups, each group wandering off in whatever direction they felt was the best option. Back at the military base in Aomori, people were getting worried that the battalion had not come back. On the night of the third day, the soldiers waiting at base went to the foot of the mountain and lit several bonfires, so the battalion could find their way easier after nightfall. As the sun rose on the fourth day, there was still no sign of them showing up. A search party of 60 men was formed, but on this day the blizzard was so strong they decided to postpone the search until tomorrow. The blizzard was still raging on day 5, but the search party decides they cannot wait any longer, and force their way into Hakkoda Mountain. At around 10.30am, they notice what appears to be a person, standing still in the distance. As they get closer, they realize it is indeed a soldier, literally frozen in place, in a standing position. The soldier was initially presumed dead, as he was totally unresponsive but a member of the search party notices his eyes are moving ever so slightly. The soldier is rushed to shelter and resuscitated. Once he comes to, he gives a brief rundown of what happened, and the last known location of the others. Over the next several days, members of the battalion would be found, both dead and alive. Many of the bodies were frozen solid and had to be defrosted before moving them, so they would not shatter. The ones that survived had been lucky enough to find shelter, and withstood the cold until rescue arrived. The final survivors were miraculously found 11 days after the battalion had departed, holed up in a shack used to store timber and charcoal. Ultimately, 17 were found alive, but 6 of them passed away in the hospital, leaving only 11 of the original 210 alive. Out of these 11 men, 8 were severely frostbitten requiring them to amputate entire limbs. So, what went wrong? How could 95% of a military unit be wiped out in a training exercise? A few factors are said to have contributed to this disaster. The most obvious is the lack of knowledge and preparation. Neither the officers or the soldiers had experience in operating multiple days under heavy snowfall, so they were under-equipped both in terms of clothing and gear. As a result, they could not make proper shelter and prepare food when bivouacking, resulting in many soldiers getting frostbitten on the first and second night. The commanding officer had been assigned only weeks beforehand. The previous commander who was supposed to overlook this training exercise was replaced because his wife was about to give birth. The new commander had no training or experience in winter conditions, and he didn't have much time to prepare either. As for the battalion as a whole, although they had conducted a prior exercise on a smaller scale, that was a one-day trip in good weather conditions. No one had experience in bivouacking overnight, or trekking through deep snow under low visibility. On top of this, they didn't seek advice from locals, and even rejected offers to guide them through the woods. Another factor was poor leadership. The commander did have a few opportunities to save his men. He could have called off the exercise when the local hunter warned him of bad weather. He could have decided to turn back when there were signs of a blizzard, and some of his men were beginning to fall behind. But the worst decision was to leave their trenches on the first night when it was still dark. This caused the battalion to expend precious energy wandering through the dark, and resulted in them wandering into the ravine. Finally, there was also the fact that the days they conducted their training exercise saw some of the lowest temperatures on record. So when the commander said, the gods have forsaken us, he was right to a degree. They really were cursed with bad luck, running into some of the worst weather in history. As a side note, there was another military unit conducting a separate exercise on the same day, through the same mountain range. The 31st Infantry Regiment was conducting a 12-day exercise across 225 kilometers and had passed through Hakkoda Mountain on the same day as the 5th Battalion. Although the 31st Infantry Regiment was conducting a much more difficult exercise, both in terms of distance and time span, not a single one of their soldiers were lost. 
This was because they had interviewed local hunters beforehand, and had brought proper gear, clothing, and food. They also had a local guide with them on every leg of their journey. So even though the 5th Battalion had run into extremely bad weather conditions, the number of casualties could have been much lower if they were properly prepared. Over the past century, this incident has been covered in many documentaries, and has been made into full-length movies. For many Japanese people, it is the first event that comes to mind when thinking of mountaineering disasters. If you go to Hakkoda Mountain today, there is a statue of the first survivor that was found, frozen in a standing position. There are also signs posted along the trail, where the battalion made camp in the middle of the blizzard. The location of the first campsite is close to the hot springs they were planning to take shelter the first night, an eerie reminder that small delays can lead to disaster in the wilderness. What do you think of the case? Were the officers at fault in poor decision making? Or was it simply a case of bad luck made worse by lack of preparation? Let me know in the comments below. A big thank you to Korbachu and my other Patreons for supporting this channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video. I'll see you next time.